Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about Tidal, lossless streaming, and MQA, and do a bit of investigation to see where things are at, and whether MQA is truly gone from Tidal. Now, if you're not familiar, a few years ago, I actually published a video detailing an experiment where I published music on Tidal with test signals hidden inside to do a bit of digging into what actually happens when you encode music in MQA, as well as comparing the MQA and non-MQA versions of some mainstream music, and a follow-up video discussing MQA's response to my tests. If you want to watch the full video, there is a link up top and in the description, but the summary is that MQA did not follow through on pretty much any of the promises that it made. It was not lossless, it was not actually smaller in file size than a standard Redbook lossless file, it did not do any ADC specific correction, but still gave my files the MQA Studio indicator, and in fact the authentication algorithm was somewhat easily broken, which is why I now have an MQA authenticated copy of Nyancat. And most importantly, there were various ways in which it demonstrably degraded the quality of the audio. You were paying for a solution to a problem that didn't really exist for 99% of people anyway, and it didn't actually solve that problem in the first place. This was a problem because on Tidal there was no way to avoid using MQA for many tracks. In fact, Tidal for a huge portion of its catalogue simply did not have lossless copies available. If you were just on the hi-fi tier or had chosen to not use MQA in settings, you may not have even been aware that you were still being served an MQA encoded file. If you actually wanted to use lossless streaming, you had to get a competing product like Cobuzz. And since then, other streaming services have started offering lossless streaming as well, though not always with a perfect implementation. Have a look at the streaming service comparison videos if you want to know more about that. But MQA went bankrupt a while ago, and Tidal announced that they were dropping it entirely, replacing all the MQA content with genuine lossless or high-res tracks where available, and this was, in my opinion, a great move. Now, to be clear, if you like MQA, that's totally fine. My issue with MQA was never that it sounds bad or that you shouldn't like it, it was just that it simply didn't do the things that it was claiming to do, and many people were paying more for higher price subscription tiers on services like Tidal, or paying more for hardware with MQA licensing fees baked in because they had been misled by the marketing. But now that Tidal has dropped MQA, it should be a lossless streaming service, right? Well, let's find out. If you enjoy investigative and educational content like this, it is all made possible by Headphones.com. And so if you want to support more content like this being made, consider using Headphones.com for your next audio purchase. And buy with confidence thanks to Headphones.com's 365-day return policy. I started looking into this recently because even after Tidal announced that it was dropping MQA, there were still various posts from people on Reddit and in various chat groups saying that the DAX were still showing various bits of content as MQA, even though Tidal had no indication that it was MQA or anything other than lossless. This wouldn't have been particularly surprising if it was immediately after the announcement that Tidal was dropping MQA. It's inevitably going to take some time to go through their catalogue and get the lossless copies updated to replace the existing MQA ones, especially since Warner, which accounts for about 30% of published music, batch converted almost their entire library to MQA retroactively. So it was going to take some time, but it's been about four months now since the change. And at this point, you would expect that if you are paying for lossless streaming, you're getting lossless streaming. But if I go to Daft Punk's page, hit play on their most popular track, Get Lucky, Tidal shows no indication of MQA whatsoever, and yet the DAC does indeed pick it up as MQA. So we effectively have MQA content hiding in plain sight, and if you didn't have an MQA DAC, you'd have no way of knowing that this was not the original lossless copy of the song, and it had been modified. And this means that if you don't have an MQA core decoder DAC, A, you probably won't realize that you're actually playing MQA content, not lossless, and B, you are forced to play the folded or encapsulated version of the file, with all of that ultrasonic content aliased back down into the audible band, damaging the quality of the file. In some cases though, Tidal does have multiple versions of a track or album available. If instead of clicking from the suggested track section, I manually navigate to the album for random access memories, this now plays in max quality or the original 88.2 kHz that it was recorded in. And we can double check that this is indeed the exact same as the version on Cobuzz for instance by playing from both Cobuzz and Tidal and recording the digital output into my analyzer, and then using a tool like Delta Wave to compare the two recordings. As we can see, other than the difference in time when I actually hit play, these files are bit for bit identical. And if we use Rune to check the different versions of this one album available on Tidal, we can see that there are indeed multiple versions, both encoded in MQA and the lossless high-res version. 
but having multiple versions of the same album available is not the case for a lot of music on Tidal, it seems. Whilst a lot of the high-res tracks that were available previously in MQA on Tidal, but lossless high-res in other places, now seemingly have been replaced with genuine lossless high-res ones, most of the content that was batch converted and was never available in anything other than 44.1 kHz anyway, but still got mangled by the MQA encoding process, it seems like for a lot of those, the MQA version is still the only one on there. The Influence EP by Joy Crooks, for example. Once again, there's no indication that this is anything other than lossless on Tidal, but the DAC picks it up as MQA. And if we repeat the same test as before, here we can see that the Tidal version has the usual indicators of MQA encoding. It's noisier, particularly at high frequencies, and it is not the same as the original. Once again checking in Rune, we can also see that the only version of this available on the service is the MQA version. So unfortunately, it seems like there is still a lot of MQA content remaining on the platform. Exactly how much, we can't tell, but there's still quite a decent amount, including from some very prominent artists like Daft Punk. And unless you have an MQA core decoder DAC, you probably won't know whether what you are playing is lossless or MQA. This is a real shame. Tidal's done some awesome stuff recently, like cutting the subscription price for their highest tier in half, to the point that that is now cheaper than Spotify in many regions, all the work that they've done on the Tidal Connect integration, the new DJ add-on which provides stems for many tracks, and the platform's getting really good, but as a listener, I mostly just care about getting the highest possible streaming quality I can, and more to the point, getting what is being advertised and what I'm paying for. I really want Tidal to succeed, because the more good quality competition there is in the music streaming space, the better it is for us consumers. And I want the highest possible quality music streaming to be as accessible to all as possible. But right now, it seems that from this testing, the quality you're actually getting from Tidal is variable and obscure. And as a reviewer, above all, it's part of my job to test products and make sure that people are getting what they're paying for. And right now this testing shows that Tidal is not always providing you the same quality of music as competitors like Cobas or Apple Music, and they're not being entirely transparent about it. I reached out to Tidal to ask them a few questions about this, and I asked, Does Tidal plan to add some sort of indication to the user when the content they are playing is MQA and not actually lossless? Does Tidal plan to have these remaining MQA tracks replaced with lossless copies, and what's the estimated timeline for this? And thirdly, has Tidal explicitly requested the lossless versions of content from labels and distributors, or is the updating of content previously only available in MQA reliant on those labels and distributors actively reaching out to Tidal to have their catalogues updated? I asked that last one because I have been told by a representative from a very large music publisher that they have not yet had any requests from Tidal for the lossless copies of their content, even though they do have them. Unfortunately, Tidal did not respond to these questions, they just closed my ticket without any reply. So instead, we have to rely on their existing page talking about the changes to formats on the platform, which just says that they are working hard to ensure MQA tracks will be replaced with a FLAC version in a timely manner, and they are working with content providers to replace files with high-res FLAC versions if available, but there's no timeline given for any of this. And it does somewhat contradict what I've been personally told by a publisher about previously having given MQA content to Tidal, and as of yet, Tidal has not requested any lossless copies of that same content. So where does this leave us? Well, unfortunately, it means that if you are wanting to ensure that you are always getting full lossless quality music streaming, Tidal isn't currently giving you that, and you should instead look to competitors like Cobas or Apple Music. If you do want to continue using Tidal, I would strongly recommend checking out the software Rune. It's awesome for a number of reasons, but also because it will actually show you all of the different versions of a track or album available from a service, what quality they are actually in, you can choose the one you want, and you can do the core decode in the player to somewhat unmangle MQA content, eliminating the need for an MQA core decoder deck. Personally, I'm going to be moving back to using Cobas as my primary streaming service. I want the highest quality music that I can get, and if Tidal isn't giving me that, or more to the point is making it obscure and unknown if I am getting full lossless quality or not, that makes it a much less attractive option. Again, if you like MQA, that's totally fine, and you should be able to use that. Lenbrook, the company that actually bought MQA after they went bust, is currently working with HD Tracks to launch an MQA-focused streaming service, so that will be available soon. But those of us that don't want to use MQA and want lossless should also be able to have that, especially if that's what's being advertised. There should be a choice to use either, and ideally Tidal would have just had an MQA or lossless toggle at some point, but that never happened. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you want to learn anything else about MQA, DACs, amps, music, or gear, 
Come and say hey in the Headphones.com Discord server or the Headphones.com forum, and I and other Wiggly Air enthusiasts will endeavor to help. Until next time, I'm Golden Sound. You're watching The Headphone Show by Headphones.com. I'll see you next time. <laughs>